Okay, got it. I think we're all flowing here. I see one more number. Maybe it's uh, uh, Alicia. Um, um, sure. No, that's my number. Oh, oh okay. Whoa. Oh, I saw another. Oh, you had another number? Too? Okay. I see you twice. My laptop. Okay. Yeah, I'm on my laptop. And oh, my... okay. This is the 663 That's my cell phone. Ah, okay, multitasking. All righty. Anyway, no, I don't know. Well, I can't get my Bluetooth earphones to work on my laptop, so. Craziness. All right, that's one of those corporate workarounds. I got you. All right, and you guys can see me okay, right? Just want to make sure I'm okay. Yep. All right, let me go back to everybody on here like I want. All right, that works, everybody. All right, so this one is Zechariah Speaks, and uh, let's pray. Oh, I'm sorry, can one of you all lead us in prayer, and then we'll go ahead. Father God, Lord, we thank you for this time to gather together, Lord, as teachers uh, to prepare and study your word, Lord God. Help our hearts, our minds to be open, Father, to hear the thoughts, Lord God, that you've given to our pastor, Lord God, so that we can teach these lessons, Lord, effectively, Lord God. We can teach them, Lord God, with integrity, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you for our pastor's obedience, Lord God, spending time in the word to disseminate the information to us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And God bless and his spirit bless you all. So we're talking about, obviously, the work of Luke, which that's another conversation. So we won't go too far on that. Those things are some of that background stuff about Luke is great. You know, very, very curious. Uh, his connection to Theo, Theophilus and Theophilus. I think I'm saying it right off the top of my mouth. Um, and uh, the, the, the uh, contemporaries that were studying the things of God that play a role in his, uh, I guess if you want to say, uh, uh, expression of the gospel. So that's another great element to keep in mind. Remember, Luke was not one of the 12 disciples. He was not directly involved. So uh, this is, uh, to some degree, uh, um, after the fact analysis. Well, that helps to look at it from that perspective, to know that perspective when you hear it. And you're looking at what Luke's explanation because it's it's almost like Monday morning uh, a quarterback in versus when you uh, see Matthew somebody who was right there you know uh, John somebody who's right there you know so it's kind of that's a difference in looking at the Gospels when you're studying it. Um, all right, so this class lesson is the uh, yeah the, tomorrow the 11th, and we're talking uh, Zachariah speaks. Uh, Zacharias is obviously probably a uh, what do you call it kind of Greek eyes version of Z Z Zachariah, uh, Zachariah, um, and you know that means remember right? Remember uh, God remember, yeah, Zachar and Zachari and then yeah, yeah. So um, we're looking at that aspect of who he is. He is already in the priesthood. He is doing priesthood duties, as we all recall from the last week's lesson, or if you just look at the beginning of this discussion, at the start of the book of Luke, you'll find that he's he's uh, carrying out his, uh, as it were, his uh, duties and taking his lot uh, to do uh, the lighting of the candles and so forth in the uh, temple. Uh, keep in mind, we're talking about this temple after uh, Herod the Great's rebuild. This is not Solomon's temple, as it were. All right, now, uh, so let's start in verse 57. That's where it kicks off. So uh, let's go there. We can look at, uh, y'all can just look at a Bible, your, your Bible, and we'll go from there. If somebody want to kick off reading, and then we'll just go through and now let's move on. Do y'all just go in order? 
Can you hear us louder? You have to come over there. Oh. They can hear you speak up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Verse 57. Now Elizabeth, now Elizabeth's full time came that she should deliver. Mm -hmm. And she brought forth a son, and her neighbors mm -hmm. and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias, mm -hmm. after the name of his father. Mm -hmm. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. Let's and, stop for a second uh, since we got that far. Because okay. we, we, we're going to see the little controversy that's brewing up here. And it's because of the customs of uh the uh culturally identifying the sons with the father obviously uh, and so let's go look at the uh, shared document in the first section and just the uh, general background having been made dumb by the angel gaboriel uh so I, you know i spell it gaboriel because i spell it the more hebrew way instead of gabriel uh you lose the o with gabriel what well, gabor is its own word it means big it means mighty, and so to take away that root word, you've lost meaning. Gabor, re el. so uh, of God, mighty one of God. That's what that is saying. You need that in order to properly know what his name means. All right, so Gaboriel has gone met up with uh, Zechariah in chapter in the first lesson, which was in chapter one earlier. And if you remember, as we talked about, he did cause his tongue to be stuck. Uh, cleave to the roof of his mouth because Zechariah chose to continue to question the angel. So you want to make sure that there's a context of them saying to him, they made signs to him. They made signs to uh, uh, Zechariah because, or Zacharias, because um, he, they, they, he couldn't speak. And, you know, when people can't speak, you know, when they're dumb, a lot of times people all automatically assume that if one faculty or, or sense is not working, others are not working. So when someone can't speak, uh, a lot of times people start thinking they also can't hear. So, you know, so you can't speak, they're talking to you loud. Listen, hey, can you, uh, listen, I want, you know, they, and really they can hear fine. They just can't speak. Now, um, on uh, with normal, I think, uh, uh, the, what do you call it, normal pathology of this, people who can't hear also can't speak. That kind of goes together because that's how you learn to speak if it's been something that uh was uh from childbirth or something or a long time so there's a lot of reasons why they connect together inside say they, they're making signs in him instead of just talking for whatever reason no one ever told him he couldn't hear he, that he was deaf he was dumb not deaf uh but um that's what they were operating on okay so uh they can't speak if we look here uh the angel has uh made dumb made him dumb um uh, and, and and has been marginalized in the birth, that should be the, I apologize, the T-Log get lost, in the birth of his first and only son. So effectively, because of that uh, particular position that Zacharias was taking, and if you read earlier, he, he's asking, well, how will I know this? And he's, he's like, well, you know, I'm old, and let me go ahead and read his actual words. I'm going to go back to kind of the front of um, Luke. Chapter one on the screen here. Uh, and here, okay, he said, how, he, no, I said, how? He said, Zacharias actually says to the angel in verse 18, he says, uh, whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years, okay? And the angel said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee, to show thee these glad tidings. And thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak. Okay, um, so I think the idea here that is being transferred is that angels have personality, angels have uh, emotions. And as you know, Satan expressed that, uh, Lucifer, if you wanna call him or whatever, uh, they express the nature of being a complete being, having emotions, feelings, uh, pluses and minuses. And the angel here, um, it appears the angel Gaboriel 
uh, has gotten a little bit perturbed and angry. And uh, he's, uh, in a sense, punishing John, I'm sorry, Zechariah. Uh, and maybe also what I said here in the notes, I said that Zechariah has been marginalized, marginalized in the birth of his first and only son. So uh, Zechariah is, is, is no longer central because he can't talk any longer. That's a, this is a, there's a lot of concepts in here, but effectively Zechariah has lost his voice. Y'all get that? Does that make sense to you all? Maybe I'll come back. Yeah. You get the yes. idea? Yeah. So he, because of his unbelief and his constantly questioning, questioning of the promise of an angel that declares, I am one of these, I am a, what do you call it? I'm a central angel. I am a cardinal angel. I stand in front of God. You, I, I don't lie. Okay, you don't speak to me like that. You don't keep asking me. You you go with what I tell you, but because you did that, I'm going to marginalize you. I'm going to shut you down so you won't speak anything else over the rest of this whole period of time. You're not going to control anything anymore. You're going to lose your voice in the matter, effectively. And that's an interesting, I think, an interesting uh, aspect of what's happening uh, sometimes in people's lives when they become disobedient to God. You can teach right off that lesson, as you can see. You can preach off that lesson if you want. See, when people begin to operate in unbelief or constantly questioning what God has said is going to be so, it can come a place in a time where God will marginalize or hush your voice over the circumstance because of that, or you know things like that, other type of situations as well. So he's marginalized. Relatives are calling him. Uh, relatives begin to call the baby Zacharias. His mother spoke up, declaring his name shall be John. And when the relatives reject her, uh, reject her statement based on family naming traditions, they look to his father to rectify uh, Elizabeth's error. Um, all right, that should actually be a period. And Elizabeth's error. And what he does after that is he does, can't speak, so he asks for a writing implement and something to write on. I would say a pad, but that wouldn't be accurate back then. I don't know how they wrote something small like that. So, but uh, something to write and, and transfer a message with. And um, I think that's where you, stuck, you stopped off. So you can right, take fine. off from there. Okay, verse 63. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote saying, his name is John. And they uh, marvel all. And his mouth was open immediately and his tongue loosed. And he spake and he praised God. Now, I think that is pretty clearly um, um, makes my argument or, or basically rests my case that I just talked to you about being marginalized. That the moment that he acknowledged that the angel is right and he says the things according to what God has planned, his limitation is removed and his impact or his voice in the family is restored another great lesson you can teach from right off from there like just in from that perspective the moment you decide that you're going to agree with god god will allow your voice to be amplified again the moment you decide to uh, obey the with obey the truth the the the, the isolation that you had will go away you know god will restore you to the community when you choose to walk in him. It's wonderful lessons inside of that. Even though he was a man of God, right off the top, you know, we know he was, that's who he was. He was in, you know, uh, a mode of disobedience or in a mode of, I'll just say unbelief, which was unacceptable in such a, uh, let me put it this way. This was a kind of a no room for error moment. We're getting ready to bring the Messiah in. And, and sometimes not being able to dis discern or detect the times, it causes people to get in a lot of trouble. Not knowing what season they're in, not knowing, let's use the Bible phrase, the time of your visitation, all right? So uh, in, this, in this case, it was quite costly to Zacharias, um, but his obedience, his decision and clarification to, to honor what God had said and understand it the way God had, had uh, revealed to him by the angel, released him from his 
uh, his isolation, you know, and then marginalization. And you could, in some cases, say, well, it actually from a physical ailment. A physical ailment could even result because of disobedience and unbelief. These are all kinds of things that you can keep in mind when you might teach the lesson, depending on the application and those who are uh, in your class. Uh, it's like, you know, maybe very beneficial to help them to understand some things are released when you just decide to obey God. No, uh, good point. Uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, all right, and okay, yeah, the miracle about fear. We'll talk about that a little later. Okay, go ahead. Oh, uh, let's look at the let's uh yeah, go ahead, finish. So let me go ahead and let you okay. finish. Yeah. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them, and all these sayings were noise abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Keep going. Uh, even the hand of the Lord was with him, I'm pretty sure. Uh, what verse was that? And the hand that of the Lord was 66, on? 66, verse 66. Yeah, let me just make sure I'm looking at it right. And I just want to make sure. Yeah, it's the word kai, the, the, the Greek word kai. And it means it can mean and, but many times it's actually also it's also same word, same word used for among and even, and like uh, the idea along with, along with, and and many times that's really the def that's actually the word that's more app applicable to the sentence structure that they are demonstrating. In this case, this is it. So where it says and the hand of Lord, it really means. It really would be in our language better used to the other other definitions with it would be uh, even the hand of the Lord was with him, you know, because we can see these other elements already in place. You know, what manner of this man, what man of child shall this be blank? Uh, the hand of the Lord was with him. He, you know, even the hand of God was with him. You know, and we already know the hand of the Lord was with him because we already discussed that. So they didn't really need to be redundant there. They're really saying effectively, uh, uh, they're not adding, they're just clarifying even the hand of the Lord is with them. Instead of and the hand of the Lord was with them, they already have discussed that and kind of established that. So what they're uh, doing is really just kind of, uh, what's the right word I'm trying to say here? Um, I just say clarifying is probably still the best term. It's kind of clarifying, uh, and it's not redundancy. It's really just more clarity. Even the hand of God is with him. All right. All right. So that makes sense to everybody. I'm maybe could use that for vocabulary. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That word and just that word and which is that kai word k a i uh, in. But it's Hebrew, Hebrew, I mean Hebrew, I'm sorry, Jewish. Ugh, keep Hebrew Jewish. Okay, Greek. So <laughs> let's try it again. Okay. Kappa, Alpha, Iota. Okay. Gai. All right. Oh, let's see. Then the mouth was open. Was speech, speech. Okay. So let's look at the name John. Yon. Yonis. Yonis. Uh, sometime you'll see an end on it. And instead of an S or instead of a uh, sigma, uh, but yon or you know, but said new, uh, a new, but it be, uh, so it'll be yonin, but yon is basic, uh, general. Um, uh, this word is basically a, a Greek eyes version of some things there, uh, and it uh, is telling you a little bit more about him. The definition. Is not on that particular phrase, although I did have a way of proving what it is. Um, um, I could just tell you, but you all have a let's do that. You all can pull it up on your. Uh, let's just say you Google this. Let's do this right now. Let's say you Google this and let's look up this word, John, and its root. So this would be good for us, as opposed to me just uh, talking right here. Um, as soon as you type in John, they bring up movie stars and stuff. Look, I type in the words John, what comes up? Toilet and prostitute client. That tells you everything you need to know about America. 
Marion Webster, the first thing that comes up for the definition of John is toilet and a prostitute's client. Wow. How, how low has this country fallen? Well, interesting, interesting. That's scary. Let's see if we can find some more about John. Okay. <laughs> Keep going down as a male name. Uh, now they're going to give us English. Okay, Greek. It's really it's right. It says Greek Latin. In Greek, it's really Greek. That's what it is. You know, it's all right. All right. Yohanan. Yohanan. Okay. Uh, grace. And there it is right there. Yeah, that's the right word. Gift or grace. So uh, I'm looking at Wikipedia's definition of all things compared to Merriam Webster. <laughs> and they're more accurate. Anyway, common male name. Um, it's John in English, but it's really Yon, Yonis, or Yonis. Uh, and uh, it is Greek because guess who they were, they were just being occupied by, of course. Okay, they're Greeks, right? Yahweh is gracious. Yah, Yon, that's Yahweh. Yah is gracious. All right. Yonis. All right. Uh, okay, this other definition says merciful. I think they're just tying them, but I think grace is in gift. Or given a gift or given grace is really the proper, more direct meaning. So, Yonis or John, the name John says, God is gracious. God is grace. God. All right, let's go back. Oh, I could have shared that with you all, couldn't I? What screen do you all see right now? Let me ask that. You see, you see, uh, you see, yeah. outline. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see something. I like seeing, I like learning while I'm doing it. Uh, there you go. Let's try that. Can you all see that now? The definition? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is what I was saying, sharing with you. And that was in Wikipedia, uh, as opposed to what I saw from Marion Webster, which I hope you can see that as well. That was the first thing that comes up with John. Toilet and prostitute client, prostitute's client. All right. Well, that's interesting. All right. Back to the handout. Uh, let's see. Go ahead and finish. Did you read the last one? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, oh, six, six, we skipped to seven, verse 76. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, and thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto, unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the uh, day spring from on high had visited us, hmm. to give light to them that hmm. sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Uh, I should have put that word in there too. Uh, I can't put it on from here, from this other computer. This word, day spring. Yeah, I mean, that's a trick. And I, once I heard it, but heard it again, I was like, oh, I, I, should, I meant to, I should have done that. So, this word, day spring, any uh, guesses on what that means? Any guesses on what that means before I type it in? Light. <laughs> you said light. Okay. Not terrible. Not terrible. It's going to surprise you. There it is. Can you all see that? Anatoly. Anatoly. I'm sorry. A. Anatoly. That's an eight. eight uh. Okay. And what is it actually? Is the rising of the sun. Or dawn. Okay, so I guess I'll send you all this once I finish this better uh, an updated one. Okay, so uh, day spring Anatoly. Yeah, hope that makes sense when you hear that. Now, if somebody says someone's name is Anatoly, you know what it means—the rising of the sun. Okay. Uh to give light to them 
that sit in darkness and shadow death. That makes sense now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it can be dangerous when people start guesstimating and associating words, but don't actually define words in the original language and say and try to take it in English and cause it to mean what it could mean in English by associating terms. Day, spring, someone could say uh, water from the day. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing to do with water. Uh, it's the day springs forth, the light, the, the, the morning begins, comes out. All right. Um, uh, ready? Uh, so any where did we stop, right? So, yes, so Zachariah gets to speak once he is willing to, uh, well, so you could say a couple things. He spoke by writing, to be honest. He spoke that God's word is true. But he gets the release of his physical tongue in, when he's in, when he comes to obedience and the completion of uh, what God's word has, uh, God's word has promised. So, Zachariah speaks. What well, do you have? Uh, you all have any thoughts about that? Uh, about anything else regarding? Uh, I guess you could say kind of uh, exponent um, ideas that you d derive from. Uh, that's that, uh, lesson. No, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't, you know, anybody's uh, I'm guessing that means no. All right, well, praise God, that's tomorrow, and then when next one, John the Baptist appears. Uh, loop three, two B uh, through six and fifteen through eighteen. Uh, so that is um, our next area. It's kind of a lot of elements in there already, but just I uh, guess we look at what he's talking about. Someone wants to start reading in verse two. Uh, I guess you could start at the second portion after the comma in verse two, or you could start from the beginning of verse two. I don't care. Okay, that's Luke 3 and 2, and it reads, mm -hmm. Nias and Sophias, being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. As it was written in the book of the word, uh, yeah, I, I, I prophet saying, voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough way shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Okay, let's stop there after that. That's that first section. So, uh, yeah, so this is the next week, uh, John uh, the Baptist appears. And I think looking at that, we're talking about Yon, remember Yonis? We're talking about this gift of grace or this God's grace, uh, who Yon represents. John represents God, is giving us a grace. And of course it was, it's now manifesting itself because in this area we can see John comes into his own calling by the coming of the word uh, of God. When the word comes to him, uh, he starts to flow into who he really is. And what he really is, is that grace of God that they are destined and they are worthy of uh, destruction and death. And yet God sends someone to bring the word of repentance. You know, it, it, God brings an opportunity for Judah. Uh, you know, it's Israel more broadly, but really we're talking Judah. We're in Jerusalem. We're talking about the only true tribes that are still kind of in play. Uh, Judah, Benjamin, in action, you know, active play, I guess, if you want to solid, say that, and Levi. Um, so uh, he says here that uh, you can see John, oh, that's what I wrote, I'm sorry, that, you know, John's coming to his own calling by the word of God. Suddenly he came out of the wilderness preaching, preaching repentance, uh, re uh, using, or I would, might say applying baptism. I say using the application of baptism. Uh, I need to understand that what he's preaching, preaching is repentance. 
But the, the mechanism of that repentance is a physical act. So this is where you get a lot of speech act theology, like ideas behind that, where you have to do a certain thing with like you're very Catholic, uh, very uh, uh, orthodox in, in, in these ways, and that uh, Catholic, I should say even small c there, Catholic, and that people are, uh, you know, kiss this statue and bend your knees here and dip your fingers there and, you know, do this action. And you do this action, it symbolizes what's going on inside you. You are changed. You are no longer the same you uh, uh, forgetting those things which are behind and pressing forward, uh, uh, looking forward to those things that before, you know, like Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3, uh, that's a model that this is where I am now. Well, how do I know that's where you are? Look what I did. I got baptized. Okay. So that baptism, uh, that washing symbology, which baptism is, is really big. It's really, uh, really significant. Because it's saying something about what an individual is now. Now, now we know that people can ba be baptized and uh, remain exactly the same. You know, the water in the pool is not going to make you change. However, uh, if the heart of the individual was sincere in their turning toward God, then that baptism is kind of the sealing of that new covenant that they have in uh, they have uh, joined. They have. Uh, be, become a part of so repentance is what's going on when you see me get baptized effectively that's what you're seeing baptism being a sacrament then it's really showing i've repented i don't no longer live that way now uh then this does conflict with baby baptism now doesn't it it, it does conflict with that because uh, infant or baby baptism cannot be uh, a symbol of repentance because the child themselves is not and can could, cannot have expressed repentance at that point. They can't even speak, uh, and uh, we don't even we don't really have any sin that they're repenting from either. So uh, that is an issue theologically, uh, orthodox. I should, I should say, in in, 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 in uh, the teaching, the proper teaching, or right teaching, right? Uh, right teaching, correct teaching. Um, how does a child who's, you know, only days old or a month old or months old repent? And, and that's, that is a problem. Uh, but it is what the symbol is supposed to mean uh, in this root. So keep that in mind. Let me see what else did you say there to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, so this part I wanted to make sure I did, uh, brought the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Remember, this is starting to get his voice now. This is John uh, now getting his voice. Uh, John becoming very relevant. John um, coming into his own, as it were. And um, in this, he is uh, quoting Isaiah. Uh, he quotes Isaiah, and, and what he says there is, uh, preparing that he is preparing the way of way for the long-awaited Messiah. So they've been looking for the Messiah. Uh, they've been hoping for the Messiah, and now they actually have the Messiah on the way. John is then saying, "Okay, the quote you heard from the prophet Isaiah is now being manifest. I am, and this is what we ought to all be doing. But I am making ready for this great Messiah to come." And of course, this is the season for that, uh, that people, you know, so we celebrate this season in connection with that. But I'm making way for that, all right? And uh, let's get what he says. He says, voice crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Get things cleaned up. A royal king should not have to twist and turn. A royal person should not have to duck and step over things and it shouldn't be bad design or bad uh, architecture in the building it things should be clear and the path to the throne ought to be regal and it ought to be clean and it ought to be smooth and it should not be uh, uh what do you call it bumps or dips in the in the flooring or in the road as it were so all of those things that are indicating that the, the work that needs to be done is to make the is to make the um procession of the king 
uh, regal. And that's what John the Baptist is doing in this kingdom, because this kingdom is about salvation. And so John the Baptist is making the path and saying we are in a lot of other kind of concepts, even in a post-Messiah uh, period where the Messiah has come and gone back to heaven already, that those of us who are looking for him to return the second time ought to be again, in a prophetic way, then long-term way, making the path uh, for the return of the Lord smooth. Let's read a little bit of that again one more time. Uh, Every valley shall be filled, so there should no be dips, no dips, should be no dips, all right? Uh, every mountain shall be brought low, so it should be big old things, you have to step to all bumps, high, you know, big steps up, but everything should be evened out, all right? Everything should be evened out. The crooked should be made straight, and the rough places should be made smooth. Look at that. Look at that. Look, look. And everybody's going to see then. Look at this now. All of that now. And all flesh shall see who God gave to save them. The salvation of the Lord. Is at this point making the, the rough places smooth, smooth and the, uh, making the crooked straight and uh, preparing the way you'll see who it is or what it is. In this case, we know it's a who. It is the Messiah, the salvation of God, the salvation of the Lord. Okay. All right. So uh, let's jump on, go a little further. It then goes to verse 15. Mm -hmm. Verse 15 through 18 reads, And as the people were in expectation and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet, of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner. But the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. And many other things in his exhortation preach he unto the people. Wow. That was powerful. I mean, I see more things to pull out of there than even than I even started with here. So uh, but that was powerful. I mean, so they're musing. I put this word muse up in up here on purpose. Uh they are law the along. The alogi, yeah, the alogi zomai, the alogi samagi, samai. You got to be a Greek man, do six syllables, right? The alogi zomai, all right? And reason, thoroughly argue and think out. So that first, in the first verse 15, and the people were in expectation, and all the men mused in their heart. Mused in their heart means that they reasoned and thoroughly argued and thought about and thought out the situation. When you see that word muse, you want to make sure that you're comfortable with that because the modern uh, cultural application of this word muse is, is witchcraft and frequently is applied in a way in which the, uh, the suggestion is, I have an object, an idol, or even some kind of person a lot of times when uh, painters, they have a female model or whatever, but some kind of model. And they're like, oh, she gives me creativity when she sits there naked or whatever. And then I start creating. And then, oh, even music writers say, you know, I need this person to be around me and then I can write songs. So what they're, turn what they're doing is idolizing uh, a person or an object and saying, oh, I got to have my statue there. Now I can think and create. Well... The word muse in its original Greek form, dialogi zomai, is just simply to think and reason and uh, argue and so forth to study the idea of the thing. So that's a distinction from the modern cultural application of that word muse. So they're trying to figure out, who is this John? Is he the Messiah? And he says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm indeed baptizing you with water. But as you will see in the other texts, like in Matthew 3 and so forth, he says, but the one who's, one who's uh, coming is mightier than me. Um, 
and he whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose, who will baptize you not with water, but with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He will he will thoroughly purge his floor, la la la, his fans in his hand, he'll thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat into the garner and the stuff that's not wheat, he's gonna burn with unquenchable fire. All right, so there is a fire that's applied, but we we understand that all men's work will be tried, tried by fire, right? Corinthians, uh, what, three? Uh, excuse me, sorry about that. Um, I think it's first Corinthians, I'm saying it right. Chapter three or chapter two, four. Uh, you all can double check that and make sure I'm saying the, which the right chapter so you're looking. But anyway, um, so the fire is there, but some fire for those who are the children of God is just testing and proving fire. The fire for the unbelievers, the ones who are not the wheat, is for destruction. And there's no difference. And, and it's different how you, so the, the troubles of the unbeliever, the, I'm sorry, the trouble of the child of God or the believer uh, and the, the trying is the trying of your faith, all right? Uh, let let um, let uh, the trial or let uh, uh, patience have her perfect work. Let let the, the the things that are happening bring out the truth of who you are. However, in the case of unbelievers, that fire is simply for the purpose of destroying them and bringing them to naught. So that's a different uh, different type and and. Uh, application of fire all right. all right what do we also we got we got the word muse john, john comes on the scene basically unknown to the general public however this is not in your original notes i typed that later however th his close relatives can help can't help uh but to have remembered the divine activities surrounding his birth so but that can't be yeah that's what i want to can thank you very much okay um and uh and let's move this out of the way all right um uh, many times this was application no thought many times uh god has your your ministry for such a time as this or he is applying to such a time as this ministry uh that had to do with uh esther right and we talk about the fact that um, Esther had came to uh, was uh, admonished by her uncle Mordecai that you know what you got in this place you're in, and you were in a sense insignificant in that yes you were the king of Persia Xerxes' wife, and you are a special, uh, uh, but you know as far as world history you would have never been mentioned, you would have never been you know particular kind. There's been a lot of queens. But you were put on this earth for such a time as to be in, be in position to cause the, the survival and the protection of Israel, of Judah, uh, in such a time as the uh, exile, the Persian uh, captivity, the continual captivity after the uh, Babylonians, the Persian captivity. And so that for such a time as this is a, an applicable concept that uh, John at this point is coming out of his uh, unknown status. And now he's talking and he's starting to become significant because it's his time. And it's kind of like knowing that this is a season for you. God is like moving things in position for season. Everybody is not for all the time. You know, and that's a problem. Sometimes we think, you know, this is oh I'm gonna do this forever. I'm gonna do this job forever. I'm gonna be in this particular role forever. And and, and that's not how God operates. God has you in there for seasons to do certain things. And uh then he sends you on to the next thing and someone else does something else. So we gotta be able to recognize that and flow what God has us doing at the time. And John at this point is just demonstrating that really well. As he comes out, he doesn't have a long season, you know, and we pay attention to this. It's really not a long season uh, as far as our, our, our references to him, uh, but he does what he has to do to prepare the way of the Lord. So that's basically John comes out, he appears, he does his his ministry, comes out, is fulfilled, and that's what he does. Also through the Isaiah chapter 40, and then for your reference that you see being discussed um, in, in Luke, actually, because he's quoting it to a great extent, 
but it might be useful to read it. It is going to be a little different from the Old Testament, New Testament uh, uh, language. Uh, so it worth looking, but that's the, the same discussion is there. So questions? John the Baptist appears. Well, I say it comes into his ministry or, you know, you know, whatever. No? Okay. All right. Don't forget when you're teaching this class to, 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 to make sure they understand that word muse properly. Okay. Was somebody trying to say something? I thought I heard something. No, I just said everything um, sounded good and was really clear. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to take a lap for that. Okay. I'm <laughs> just joking. This lady this week at work said that I looked like I was in my 30s or 40s. So I said I have to I have to celebrate that. You know, I gotta take a lap for that. So when I told her how old I was, she said, That's a testimony. <laughs> I said, Really? <laughs> I thought it was good. She said, What? That's quite a testimony. <laughs> I'm like, okay. All right. Well, anyway. All right. So let's go on to the next lesson then. That'd be the case. Mary rejoices. Luke 1, uh, 46 to 55. And that's actually on Christmas. I know we're working on what we're going to do that day. All right. Uh, okay, so let's go. And then we'll have one of you guys can go ahead and kick us out of verse number. Uh, kick us off, I'm sorry. Verse 26. Okay. Hold on, I lost my page. Here I am. Okay. All right. Luke 1, 46 says, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. He has put down the mighty from their feet and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. <laughs> he, <laughs> he has opened his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. As he speaks, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so as he's, yeah. So uh, we missed the whole lesson. So the, the framework of this is uh, kind of, mm, mm, well, this, I just, you know, that, you know, I guess when you're studying things with uh, um, kind of a analytical and literary perspective, you can, it's, I see so many angles. So, but let's just start with what we're looking at. Uh, first of all, uh, she starts out, uh, with the idea that, well, this part of the le lesson, up where it starts in verse what is it, 46, uh, she's ready now. I think that's the, the high point there, is that initially when she was met by the angel Gaboriel, uh, you know, she was a little questionable too, uh, but she never doubted him. She didn't doubt it could be. She, uh, she did ask a question, though, uh, similar um, like Zachariah, or Zachari uh, Zacharias, I'm saying. Uh, so uh, that would be an interesting uh, debate to have for another reason. But uh, having experienced the pre-birth transfer transferring of God's Holy Spirit into John when she met her cousin Mary, uh, or met her cousin, comma, Mary fully embraces her ordained mission. So let me put that really semicolon. It would be there. Uh, uh, Mary embraces her uh, ordained mission. So I think when we're starting off where we are seeing that, we are seeing that Mary is, she's on board now, 100%. Uh, she has, uh, if you go back a little bit, when she meets with her cousin Elizabeth earlier, which is not in the lesson, but uh, verse 39 uh, Mary rose in those days and went to the hill country with haste in the city of Judah, Yehuda, uh, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Mary, uh, I'm sorry, that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe, 
leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. All right. So there was this extraordinary spiritual event that had occurred uh, subsequent to the angel's visit with Mary. And, uh, you know, I mean, she said, wow, whatever it is that's going on with this baby and me, it's powerful. Because I spoke to my cousin and her baby leaped in the womb. Okay. That was extraordinary. That was a powerful symbol of the uh, of that the uh, of what the Holy Spirit is is and can do and will do. Um, so this, I, I mean, I'm in it now. I see I'm fully in it. You know, uh, you can go back and look at her discussion with Gabriel, Gaboriel, uh, uh, if you want to say. Uh, uh, and and look when she first hears about it. Uh, no, I'm going to go back to it because I think it's important. To, there's a little distinction um, with her and Zachariah. Uh, so let me do it that way. Um, okay, Elizabeth hit herself for five months. I'm just in chapter one, verse 24. Okay. And the sixth month, and, and in the sixth month, uh, the angel Gaboria was sent from God, from God, into the city of Galilee. So we know that's further north, named Nazareth, all right, to a virgin who was espoused to a man named Joseph. Well, we know the story of the house of David, all right, and the virgin's name was Mary. So we got Mary and we got David. Uh, Mary, uh, I'm sorry, we got Joseph, who's tied to the king family, royal lineage, David's family, all right. And her name is Mary, or Miriam, technically. And angel speaks to her and says, Blessed out the hell, thou that I highly favor, the Lord is with thee. Blessed out thou among women. And she was troubled at what he says and what manner of salutation is there. The angel says, Fear not, Mary, uh, for, uh, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. Verse 31. All right. And, uh, and shall call his name Jesus, Yahshua. Savior, Yeshua. You call his name Yeshua. You know, it's funny today to me that in, in 2022, uh, most quote Christian folks don't even know the name Yeshua. That's an amazing thing to me. And on many of the mainline churches, that is still some kind of oddity in their mind. This is 2022. That tells us something about the training and the efforts and educating of the flock that's going on in the body of Christ. That is actually an indictment. That people, when you say Yahweh, they look at you funny. <laughs> you should, that, that is an amazing thing. That's like, wow. In 2022, there has not been any progress. Today I heard one of the people, not beating them up, you know, but at the uh, the, men, the women's ministry meeting saying something about, oh, yeah, maybe we can do something else around Easter. Here's 2022. <laughs> and we're still using pagan terms like Easter, you know. The the, uh, the female pagan support goddess for you know the, the sun god um, that is pretty significant. And I mean, I, I mean, maybe because we've been benefited by the Holy Spirit and having good teachers around us, and we know better that it seems shocking. But it's 2022. That means people are still preaching the same stuff and not not progressing at all. Well, real progression. That's what I mean. That's pretty scary. Let's move on though. Uh, so uh, she's recognizing the great blessing and the power that is present because uh, of what God has done in her. Uh, so she said, my soul magnifies the Lord and rejoice in the God, uh, in God, my salvation, for he has done great things to me. He's done something awesome to me. All right. Uh, and she is beginning, Mary is, has been selected. And the proof of this selection is already manifesting itself before the child is born, which I just discussed with you earlier. All right. Uh, let's see. Magnify. Uh, look at this. Uh, if you one of you all want to look at this um, word here for magnify, I guess you can see I'll spell I'll, I'll say it. Megali. Uh, I'm sorry. Megaluno. Megaluno. All right, Pegaluno. 
Um, and that is a upsilon, but we use a Y in English. That's why we they have suke in the Greek and because they, they use the upsilon, but in English we put a Y in there and have psycho. They have suke, we have uh, we have psyche or, or depending on the ending cycle. Uh, so that's what that is. So uh, mega luno. Oh, um, yeah, muga luno. Make large, mega. Look at the root word, mega, big. All right. It's a word magnify. My soul makes big, makes really large, expands. All right. On the on um the Lord. That's what magnifies the Lord. I'm talking, I'm making he's big, you know, make him great. There's somebody had a song not too long ago. I can't remember. I think it's uh Marvin Linus. Uh magnify him. Yeah, yeah, magnify him, make him great, make him great. Yeah. Uh no, it says cool Sam. Hey on that. Anyway, so making great, and then the second definition is they begin to try to clarify for you in that definition. They say praise greatness. Praise greatness. Okay. Mega luno. Mega luno. All right. Praise, pray, praise and make big in your praise. Make a big bigness of him in your praise. All right. So that's what Mary is doing because she's in fully recognizing now her calling her mission what her ordination is about it's about bringing yahweh yahshua into the world okay what verses you start you did all of them right you finished all the verses okay yes all right so then his strength that is his ability to choose promotion and authority in his in this case uh signals his compassion for the downtrodden now this is notable and that's why I think when Mary says it in so many different ways, it's worth you noting. Uh, I'm not trying to speak anything in reference to social justice conversation. You know, that's not the thing. It's the Bible. It's about the orthodox doctrine that we're studying. But what she is saying, something very important, that God has seen how the elite and those who are of the controlling class have always positioned themselves to be, quote, the ones that everyone must look at. They are the ones who are the holy ones. They are the ones who are the chosen ones. And all of the rest of you little peons or plebes need to obey and listen to them. And in this case, uh, uh, Mary recognizes that this is a type, this type of coordination of the common class versus the elite juxtaposition as favor from God. She sees that this is a this is God showing favor to the common person, the, those who are the normally ignored or minimal, minimal, uh, minimal, minimized. Uh, she's recognizing that God is saying, I'm picking somebody out of Nazareth, the hood quote, if you would. I'm picking somebody out of the not good area. I'm picking somebody out of the offset up near past some area. These people aren't even proper believers. There's a lot of things going on there, unlike down in Jerusalem, where the, you know, Judah and Jerusalem, where the elite religious people operate. I'm getting somebody coming out of Nazareth. All right. So that's that's a big thing. It's a big statement that she's recognizing. So when you hear her keep talking about it, it's not really just her she's trying to honor up or glorify or to be uh mm, so gracious, grateful for. She's talking about really a class struggle that God is actually, you see, you can take this in different angles, right? That God is uh, actually indicating his um, preference to honor the less recognized folks over, you know, the John Hycrenius, uh, you know, kinds, you know, over those people who were the Edomians who got positioned because of the uh, Greeks' uh, ch choice to keep some degree of conflict going between the governing body and the commoners because the Judeans are the, the I want to call them the uh, come on, the uh, uh, those who were following uh, uh, the Maccabeans and so forth were uh, constant doing revolutions and uh, what do you call it uh, insur insurrections and things like that in resistance to the Jewish uh, Jewish, I'm sorry, Jewish, in resistance to the Greek, um, to the Greek um, impositions of power. And so this was definitely God saying, I'm not going to the Jewish centers of power 
I'm going to go to these other uh, uh, kind of like satellite regions of the, of, the, of, the, of the state and pull somebody from Galilee. And she's not wealthy. They're not wealthy per se. You know, uh, she's a spouse to Joseph. Um, and he comes to her and he says she's a highly favored. And uh, uh, also she's constantly recognizing and saying, look, 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 look at what God has done to give his people. You, you've taken someone who's of the lowest state. You, you, you're looking at the ones who have not been uh, recognized previously and you're making a statement, God, you know, look at what all this things. Uh, he had, for he had, verse 49, for he, for he that is mighty has done great things to me and holy is his name. So that's our acknowledgement, acknowledgement, acknowledgement. His mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Right, right, right. Let's go look, up, uh, look down. Uh, he has scattered the proud. Um, 51 and uh, B, uh, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Uh, he has put down the mighty from their seats. See, he has put down, that's that promotion I discussed there earlier. He ha He's showing his power and his ability to be the one who chooses promotion and or who is being an authority. You think you're an authority, but he'll put who he wants an authority and he will use those who you don't think should be there. He, he takes the weak things of the world, right, to to uh, or the, the the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. All right, and that's that's First Corinthians chapter one. Mm -hmm. So he has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. Verse forty two. All right, he has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped the servant, uh, his servant Israel. All right, and uh, in the remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers and the reference to Abraham and the seed forever. So uh, forever, the blessing that God had promised Abraham, uh, Abraham is, is being still demonstrated in this. And he's making sure that they are being uh, given the, the favor. He's favoring them. If no one else is favoring them, God himself is favoring them. And that's a good takeoff point as well. People that when no one else is favoring you and when you are not in the position, or you were not amongst them who appear to be the, uh, 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 what do you call it, those who have had the golden touch, you know, as it were. And God says, I can give you a golden touch that overrules all of their golden touch. You will be my blessed, and, and because I anointed you for my purposes, and that's key and critical. So the juxtaposition is right there. He's switching them from the, he's switching power from the common class well, we're normally from the elite class to the common class. So, any questions? Did I do a good job again? No, no questions. <laughs> That's the job. Okay. Well, that's the, those are the three lessons uh, that we have. So hopefully that's helped you all, helps you all think about it, gives you some tools. And I will send you this one uh, before I go. And then I'll send the, uh, I'll send the, uh, put the video up, but I will only put the video up. I will send you all the link to the video. I don't think, I think with these and the sermons, I have not made them public. I've only published them. I'll send you guys the, um, uh, URL, but it'll be private. No, everybody won't be able to just grab this. Alrighty. Questions, anything, comments? No? Okay. Uh well then we can close out in prayer. Um uh, if there's no comments, so make sure I didn't have a good time. I didn't have a comment on the lesson, but I did want to give an update. I had not contacted you about Sunday the 25th because I haven't heard back from Lisa Stitch yet. Um, but other than that, basically everyone had replied that that was fine if, you know, it could be done. Like I, uh, I think I put in the text. Yeah, I put in the text, I think a couple of years ago when we did it on Christmas Day, we did Sunday school after worship service because then you left. And went on over to Sherway, and then we did Sunday school afterwards. Um, from what I remember, that Sunday morning we had worship early that morning. Okay, um, I, I kind of remember. That. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
even though Pat replied, can we do a Zoom call? But, you know, I'm just saying. I'll give you the update. So basically, everybody else said that was fine, but they're not now. Okay. They were talking about that today. People getting so Zoom, they don't want to come out. Time to come out. <laughs> that, that joke was it's time to come out. The you know I'm coming out. Whatever some of them, um, but a lot of them have been very. Uh, what's the word? Um, um, they have been. Um, I can't think of the word for, for it, but they have been um, enclosed. So I'll just use that simple word um, and uh, sequestered. That's a good word. They have been sequestered by COVID. So <laughs> anyway, all right, well, we're gonna uh, end, the, end the class. Let me do that first and then in the recording, I'm sorry. And then uh, we will talk, we could talk about these other things uh, as is needed. Uh, all right, first of all, I'll stop the share, stop the share, all righty. And then we'll go down here to the meetings.